the stockings have been hung. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I, I was gonna try to do a big intro, like a, like a. You know, oh, sorry, please well, do. Well, welcome to, to Blink One Fifty Five, the only <laughs> Blink One Eighty Two podcast. Definitively, I'm, I suspect, I haven't confirmed this, but dedicated to providing you with a never-ending stream of content, even through the holidays. When many other content, lesser content creators, take time off. Whereas you and I were recording this uh, live from our respective family rooms Christmas morning. This is, this is, uh, it's Christmas morning. It's Christmas My, morning. So Merry Christmas <laughs> to you. Merry Both Christmas of our to families are sitting, sitting around us in a circle watching us watching. record because they just can't wait to open gifts. But we're like, nope, sorry. Sorry. Priorities. Yeah. So, uh, you know what pays for these gifts, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> It's, that was your most that was your most welcome welcome voice I think you've ever done. Was it? Yeah, it was like welcome. Oh, I thought you made it like actually sounded the most welcoming. <laughs> oh no, it was the opposite of oh. welcoming. <laughs> Very much so. Well, listen, the holidays are a trying time, um, you know, uh, for a lot of people, but also you know a wonderful time to to welcome uh, family and friends into your heart. Uh, and of course, that that's what we've been doing for the last hundred and hundred and thirty weeks or so is is welcoming each other into each other's hearts. Um, and so, Josiah, <laughs> may I just say uh, on this uh, most holy day, uh, respect to you and and your people. I guess this episode is coming out after today. <laughs> pretty, so. pretty. Uh, wow, that was so sincere. Is, <laughs> you really meant that. Is Boxing Day in the Bible? Oh, you've said the oh, title fuck. already. <laughs> okay, we're not starting it yet. There's a we have there's a system here. Look, I want to talk to you about how yes, it's the spirit of the holidays, but everyone's letting us down this week. Mm. Our heroes are failing us drastically. In the last week, I would say the member of Blink One Eighty Two who came out on top the most was somehow Travis Barker in terms of like social media presence. <laughs> it's very confusing and upsetting. Right? Yeah, it's it's so, not the world you I, want to live in. So, so who do you want to hear about first? I'll tell you, every member of Blink-182, something has happened this last week. Mm, okay, let's start with Matt, you know, the newest addition to the family. Okay, well, Matt Skiba was, I mean, this is somehow the least gross thing that happened this week, and yet it's still, like, fucking gross. But he posted this, first of all, this is definitely not vintage, it just looks like it's from Target. But um, he posted this horny, he, did, he was horny on Maine, mm. as usual. Um, it was pretty bad because he posted this Judas Priest shirt on his Instagram and he wrote, in, he, I guess he's quoting himself here. He wrote, darn it. I hate it when the vintage metal baseball tees I score on eBay don't fit. Too small for you? Perfect for her. Hashtag lingerie. Hashtag this. Hashtag only this. And then the purple smiling devil heart and some hearts. Oh. And Mary, hashtag Mary Sexmas. Um so, I mean, I just think that's a pretty bad post, in my opinion. Well, you're right. I mean, to start with, this for sure looks like an Urban Outfitters t-shirt. I don't. I also don't understand why he's put darn it up until they don't fit in quotes. Like, you know, he said that. I think that. he's quoting the girl. The girl is saying that it doesn't fit. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. He's quoting. I feel yeah, like you're he's, right. quoting he's quoting himself. himself. Like, I've secured this T-shirt, but hey, little devil on my shoulder chimes in and says, too small for you. Perfect for her. And her is in all caps. <laughs> I think it's important to know. Yeah. And so this, and not only that, but this post birthed. I don't know if you saw the the homemade, or I guess bespoke is the word, Blink-155 <laughs> lingerie that someone made. Yes, where they extremely just, bespoke. <laughs> it's extremely cursed. Uh, I think it was the user Smelly Chops made, um, basically he just took a Sharpie to some white uh, undies and just wrote, I heart Josiah on the, <laughs> I believe that's called the gusset of the underwear. <laughs> This is becoming a fashion <laughs> podcast. It is. And so, I mean, that was that was the least bad thing that happened. Obviously, if Scott didn't I don't, we don't know what Scott did this week. He's out of, he's staying out of this. So, other than Scott, I think I'm going to pivot to Travis. Or should we Yeah, Travis is the next one. He did a hot topic store takeover on Instagram this week, which actually incredible. Was kind of perfect. Like everything about it was Kind of perfect. He was wearing a GBH shirt to Hot Topic. I'm sure no one knew what that was in there. Um, he he picked out a, a Travis Barker Funko Pop. The first thing he does as soon as he walks into the store is like pick up, uh, I think it's a Wonder Woman thong. 
And he's like, hey, Landon, I think this would look good on you. <laughs> like, literally, like, the second he walks into the store. Um, <laughs> That's- and then Alabama. They just, like, hold up a bunch of Blink-182 merch and then leave with a bunch of uh, um, Nightmare Before Christmas shit. And I love, even on Travis's Hot Topic takeover, he's doing the buy two, get one free thing. Like, you can't go to Hot Topic without them trying to put this fucking buy two, get one free deal on you. So... <laughs> Um, that's what Travis did Do you ever think that like you'll be famous enough to take over the Hot Topic Instagram? Oh my god. I w- that's honestly that's got next time if I'm ever in a job interview again that's going on the when they ask my 5 year plan. <laughs> right. <It's> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I this job needs to be part of a plan that ultimately gets me to here. <laughs> Not like not running their socials, but just like doing a take. Oh yeah, yeah. I think because running their socials is like that's like a real you know job that you could that you could aspire to. I think the takeover is like that's the moonshot. You know. <laughs> I also just love that this Travis Barker thing. Like if you watch it on his stories, I guess you can't now because um, it's Christmas Day right now, um, and also <laughs> it's not Christmas Day right, right. now because this gives it a this is a dead giveaway that it's not Christmas Day right now. Um, I don't know. But, I like the idea of all of our friends and family encircling <laughs> us as we record the pod. As is, <laughs> yeah, we're like, shh. They the keep like rustling a little bit. And we're like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, any Try shuffling you hear in the background is um, is not the usual. That's like, uh, you know, like it's our son. nephews and nieces wanting to open up their Minecraft <laughs> toys that we got them. Yeah. Um, but you can tell on Travis's story that he like did the Instagram takeover in a, I want to say like six minutes, um, and then. He probably got paid so much. Or maybe he just got free Nightmare Before Christmas swag. Who knows? Yeah, just get some tra- um, But here's the thing. Yeah, like, is he taking it over? Because he's in a lot of these shots. And so it kind of just feels like Travis Barker came to Hot Topic and they took a lot of photos of him and then said it was a Travis Barker takeover, which seems even better. So it was no labor required on his <laughs> end. <laughs> that's literally. He got to touch finished, a song. Like, that seems We cool. just finished the, bo- the Boys, that TV show. And I remember there's a scene where... Homelander gets confronted for the exact same thing for not doing his social media right. takeover yeah. that he was said to have done. Um, anyways, okay, so that was Travis. That <laughs> was like the most wholesome the thing. It is like so stupid and so good. Yeah. Um, okay, we're gonna save Tom for last because it's been one hell of a week. Ah, uh, yeah, that one we got to dig into. That's. Uh... <laughs> but, but Mark it is like. I don't I feel remember like I keep what the getting, Mark thing was. I keep getting gaslit by Mark, I think. Oh, this because was bad. I thought that <laughs> yeah. I thought he didn't drink forever. Um and then apparently he has just been secretly drinking this whole time. I don't know what's going on. I, I just thought all he does is like think about drowning in the ocean metaphorically all day. But apparently he's just kind of living these constant double lives. So until very recently and in fact like even a month ago, this one viral quote from him keeps getting reshared by him by different um, vegan activism accounts. But for a very, very long time, Mark has, like, sort of given off a vegan vibe. And I think he's, like, said that he's vegan a few times. He hangs out with vegans. He's always been, like, kind of all about animals and stuff. And so this is a this even this quote that is constantly recycled is, was reposted by Vegan Posters in November twenty second two thousand nineteen. It's Mark saying it's been months since an animal has had to die so that I could eat a meal, and I feel smug as shit about it to be honest. Which is like pretty tight actually. If I was vegan, I would totally lean into the feeling smug about it as well. Well, because you know that they all think it, and so it's just nice to to feel that a vegan is being honest with you. Exactly. It's like it's like when someone's like. Well, I guess I've never been asked this, but, like, the truth is I obviously think that I'm better than people who drink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, clear. of course. Like, Without <laughs> question. <laughs> I'm, like, laughing I, I would, them in conversations <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, I would I would know that you were, yeah, telling a lie if you were to say, no, that's <laughs> yeah. not how I feel. And the, you Yeah, know, like, people, do your thing. <laughs> when, when people say, like, you know, that's actually more on you, like, if you feel that you're being judged, that's because it's like, no, if you feel it because you are being actively judged <laughs> in those moments. But you also, everyone has to be okay with their decisions, and so, you know, just Yeah, chill. so Mark Mark is, like, one, I guess in, in, like, vegan Twitter or vegan land online, mm-hmm. Mark is known as a guy who's, like, smug as shit about being vegan. Um, and then last night, he just, like, straight up fully made a, a homemade <laughs> chicken soup <laughs> with, like, chopped up chicken and so much butter and cream, uh, and then he served it up three different bowls like i think it was definitely mark and sky 
and their boy. What's the boy's name again? Jack. I can't remember. Oh, Jack. Right, Jack. The three of them like ate the shit out of this uh, dairy product and meat soup. And yeah, I think he was even drinking wine. So who knows what the fuck? Mark is like such a such a schemer. <laughs> I don't I know. I just think he's like maybe one of those guys who gets really into a thing. Like like we like this is sort of a habit that that you know we all kind of have where you're like I'm really into like boxing now, you know, and I'm going to post a lot about boxing and, and like a few months later, I'll eventually just go back to being into like only looking at Twitter. But for a while I like have an interest, you know, another time that you're almost leaning into saying the title of the song and we're not ready yet. (laughs) Sorry, Stop it. I'm sorry. (laughs) So that's what Mark did. I think whatever Mark presents as we can't really trust, maybe he's like, all of a sudden he's going to be like, only going into going to Universal Studios and he like hates Disneyland or something. Yeah, like, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> it's very confusing. So Mark Mark's on notice as someone that we can't trust. Someone who we can trust to constantly say the dumbest things and be the dumbest person is Tom DeLong. And so it's been one hell of a week for Tom DeLong. Um where to even begin? He went public with his girlfriend. Um he had, of so he has two a new years, girlfriend. Right? Of of two years and I think it I think the timeline does Somewhat line up, maybe not. Um, There's no way you'd post about cheating as like a loving anniversary gram, right? That doesn't make any yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Like exactly. We, start, I don't we know. got I mean, together behind my wife's back, and you know, like we wondered if, like, once I was divorced, like whether that excitement would fade away. But it turns out our love is real. Like that's not <laughs> that's a private <laughs> sensation. Right. I mean, either way, his new wife, let's be honest, she kind of looks exactly like his ex-wife. And so that's, I mean, you got to respect him for just sort of having a type. So Consistency, really, I guess. yeah. Yeah, consistency. Um, so that happened. But then not only that, but Tom foolishly and stupidly went on another podcast, a podcast that did not protect him from his own idi- idiocy. I mean, I think that we could have steered him through this conversation a little better than he he did himself. I don't know. Did you listen to this clip yet? Because it is is this just Is this from, uh, from Just Zach? No, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> it's a Consequence of Sound blog has their own version of Just Zach. <laughs> it's called Ky- Kyle Meredith With. Um, and so they this week posted Kyle Meredith with Tom DeLonge of Angels and Airwaves. And I guess, so this Kyle Meredith fella asked Tom DeLonge, oh, there's this new Angels and Airwaves song called Rebel Girl. Are you a big time uh, Bikini Kill fan? Because that's what everybody thinks. And uh, Tom's answer, I think, is warranted to be played in full. Oh. Um, so this is, this is what Tom did this week. Um, poor Tom. Just what a fucking... <laughs> Is there any connection to that? I mean, no. that was kind of their famous song. Um, I Coming wasn't a fan world. of Bikini Kill. I, I'm a fan of the uh, her uh, the, the girl, the singer. Kathleen. Kathleen, yeah. I think she's incredible. I love all the feminism stuff she does. I love that she married, what's his name, in the Beastie Boys. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, they're like the coolest couple ever, you know? Uh, was it Ad-Rock? Uh, was it Ad-Rock? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I like, oh my God, they're like the raddest two people ever. Um, and I got really into it. I remember for a couple days, I was looking at all their photos and shit, and I was just like... Man, they're so cool, a New York couple, and she's so, like, opinionated and awesome, but still, like, really cute and cool. Um, but I was never, like, a huge Bikini Kill fan. I got into, was it La Tigre? A right, little yeah, bit. yeah, yeah, that was, um, I love that. Really cool TKO, stuff. TKO, that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but it's not anything that I would know. I don't know any of the songs or anything that she's done, so it's not like, I saw that reference, actually, on Twitter, and some people are going, oh, is it like this and this? Going, no, but what, I don't even know what they're talking about, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Well, because yeah, it makes sense, I mean, like, there any connect? So that's a uh, Kyle. Tom man, Tyre. you are not helping out your boy there. <laughs> it's like so baffling. He's like, I love what she does with that feminism stuff, feminism and she's like stuff. opinionated, but also looks cute. It's like Tom, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but like, don't you at least appreciate? And again, like this is like Mark would never deliver such an honest answer like that. Like, what's the name of the girl? Yeah, like, Mark would have like what's checked the, name of the, the girl he in would've... Bikini Kill. <laughs> You're not checked. starting on a, on a great foot. But then the fact that he can't remember Ad Rock's name is also <laughs> like like oh. And then, said, and then he said, "I've spent hours looking at pictures of them on Google, Google image search. It's like so terrible. Oh fuck! What a fucking 
dumbass. But anyways, <laughs> I love so that thank she's you. opinionated and also cute. <laughs> <laughs> so terrible. Oh, yeah. oh man. Um, so shout out to Georgia, aka Call Me Ray Jepsen, for showing us that. But the thing I wanted to talk to you most about the holidays, Sam, mm. is that it's a perfect opportunity to kind of like get into something that you've never gotten into before. Um, you know, like like take on a chunk of pop culture and just kind of binge it. Like you can veg out more than usual if you've got the right setup. And so for me, something I've really been trying to get into is uh, <laughs> like Chinese action Jesus. cinema. Okay, yeah. <laughs> because like, um, you know, China, I mean, I don't know if uh, you definitely read the trades and I do for work, but I don't know if everyone does, but like the Chinese cinema market really is the future. I mean, there's no denying, just like a uh, film opening yeah. there is like there's a, such a vast, wide audience. And so I was thinking, I got to brush up on my Chinese um, action thrillers. And so as a result, uh-huh. I was like, you know, I'm going to pick a director and I'm going to go through all of their work. Yeah. And I'm just going to spend a full 24 hour period binging this director's entire. Um, you know, filmography. Right. But the problem is that this one director that I've chosen uh, has only done two films. He's only directed two films, The, the Frightened <laughs> Studio from 2017 and then Closed Doors Village from 2014. So <clears throat> if you're going to watch Closed Doors Village and The Frightened Studio, that's not that – it's, it's going to be really hard to have a, a, a bozing day. So how long did you spend searching for a, a, a director whose name was, was Bozing? Like how, like when did that occur to you? Because I, I feel that there's a very uh, slim chance that you were familiar with, uh, with Bozing's how dare work you? <laughs> prior, to, you? prior to like five minutes before we started me? recording. You think I haven't watched The Frightened Studio 2017? Here's the, here's the uh, synopsis. There are three taboos when it comes to pa- painting. Firstly, you are not supposed to paint during midnight since it is easier to draw evil spirits to you at night. Secondly, you should not draw the eyes since they may take your souls. Finally, you may not picture ghosts since it would haunt you for it. So that's, I mean, that's right up my alley, that kind of thing. I mean, yeah, for sure. Um, like, you're right, actually. You're describing that. I'm like, that's, that's a Josiah movie, for sure. <laughs> No, I started by searching the name Bo Zing uh, in quotation marks. And then I, f- I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God there's a director because otherwise I was going to have to try to sort of come up with a long narrative about a, a shipping freight that is also <laughs> called Bo Zing Jesus that I found. Christ. I mean, it, I guess it is the holidays. There's a lot of packages, you know, flying around the <laughs> exactly. world. It's not, not impossible. Yeah. Um, so anyway, shout out to the director, Bo Zing. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we couldn't get him as a guest this week, but hopefully oh, soon. You should have tried. That actually, <laughs> in terms of uh, deliberate programming, that would have been pretty good. So the song Bo Zing Day by the band Blink182. Um, mm-hmm. Josiah, you know, some, some starting thoughts. What was your relationship to this song, of course, uh, from Dogs Eating Dogs, which enjoyed its anniversary recently, I think. I saw... Big wow. seven year anniversary. The, big, the seven classic. Year itch. Classic. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you get? What do you get for the seven year anniversary? Oh God! I, you know, I feel like you're the kind of person who actually does buy Ashley those things. I look every at, time. We've tried. We've tried. Um, seven is wool or copper. So this is we, we would be buying the dog like a wool sweater, or <laughs> a, or a copper sweater. sweater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the classic copper sweater. Um, what's what, what's what's your because this is like low key. I think kind of a hit. I'll I'll say that yeah. I was because I did never spend a lot of time with this and like. I think by the time the song comes on, I had like always stopped paying attention. Um, I feel like Dogs Eating Dogs was like came out at a, at least for me 
at a time when I was like really into cool music. Yeah. And so I felt really ashamed of myself for listening to this EP. And it's like, it would start off pretty strong and I'd be like, damn, Blink is back, baby. And then I would get to this song and the Yellow Wolf song and just kind of feel extreme shame and self-consciousness. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I know in uh, previous Dogs Eating Dogs episodes, I've sort of described my limited experience of listening to this for the first time, having it partially ruined by a coworker. Um, you know, so this song, like, I, 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 it barely exists for me. And I guess so for you, it was kind of the same. Yeah, I mean, I uh, yeah, but the the problem is, I remember thinking that about um, certain Angels and Airwaves songs too. That when I hear them now, they sound good to me because I've just completely eroded every part of my brain that has any kind <laughs> of like critical faculties with music whatsoever. Yeah. Like, if Tom or Mark are in it, I'm gonna probably either like or love it. And even when I pretend to hate it, I secretly still like it. Did you get tickets to the Angels and Airwaves show in Montreal? Of course. Are you kidding me? I can't believe you didn't. Although, I feel like Sarah doesn't want to come now after hearing uh, Tom DeLonge's Kathleen Hanna take. Oh, that was, that was it. It wasn't the him. video? It wasn't the- <laughs> Yeah, I know. Exactly. It's shocking. I think it's just once you hear him say it out loud, you're like, my God. Look at, I, his Kathleen Hanna take is that he loves feminism stuff <laughs> and thinks it rocks that she's also attractive. I mean... <laughs> Who's amongst true. us, you know? That's Praxis. That's a good <laughs> yeah, Praxis. Yeah. Praxis is, is, is <laughs> thinking that La Tigre was pretty good, not really knowing any Bikini Kill Also, songs. I think he says, like, La Tigre or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so stupid. It's incredible. <laughs> I love how dumb Tom is. But don't you sort of appreciate, like, the fact that he's not trying to be calculated about it? Because, like, the Mark answer would be, like, you've always been huge admirers of, of, of Ms. Hannah's Yeah, he would have, output. like, he would have, like, a... A, a brief history of Riot Girl written on the inside of his hand that he'd keep, like, yeah. looking down at. I know. I mean, I definitely appreciate that Tom is just, like, the stupidest guy of all time. And, and yet he's <laughs> the one who's, like, going to blow up the world one day <laughs> yeah. also. I just, I think, <laughs> it's it's, so cool. I think there's such a, such a like, a, a, a true, like, real honesty in an answer that's like, I really admire the fact that this woman whose name, like, girl, whose name I can't remember, does <laughs> feminism, like, the cool girl thing. Um, but then you also know, I love to look know. at photos of her on Google Images. Like, that's... Um, you know he definitely wanted to say chick. Like, if he had said <laughs> chick i would have thought it was art actually (laughs) totally uh (laughs) Um, tom rocks but so i the same thing like listening to this song i was especially because of of all of the nine that we've been you know immersing ourselves in as masochists for the last several weeks when you go back and listen to a song in particular so for me it's less of like one you know because i'm not going to the angels and airwaves show I, i can't i can't just sort of fully immerse myself in that same way but hearing the two of them together now has this like magnetic effect on me where I'm like, maybe, maybe I, I missed out or, or it's just nice to have a piece of this band's history that like represents the lineup you actually enjoyed be sort of, uh, excavatable this far wow. into a project like this. Big word. Um, I think I don't also, even know that can you conjugate excavate that way? Like, is that even uh, a word? probably not? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> just <laughs> since you were sort of complimenting I, me, I figured it was <laughs> worth pointing out that I, yeah. I believe well, I missed I hate to. I hate to break it to you, but the sincerity of my compliment was suspect <laughs> at best. Are you, are um, you serious? <laughs> as with all my compliments. Um, I think the the main problem with this song is that maybe it's just that it's not a fully acoustic song. Like, just, like, be corny acoustic boys mm. if that's what you want to do. Yeah. And then it would be fine. But I think what still grosses me out about it is not the lyrics or anything. It's... The drumming, like it has this stupid bounce to it that makes the whole thing kind of sound like your body is a wonderland by John Mayer. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> there was a uh, a noticeable pause between your body is a wonderland and by John Mayer, where I can only assume that you were calculating if if the amendment was necessary. For people to understand the reference, there's no other reason to to pause and then go. The the of course I'm referring to the version of Your Body Is a Wonderland, you know, most famously John performed Mayer. by John Mayer. Yeah, well, I think it's originally a Woody Guthrie song, so that's <laughs> right, why I'm yeah. it. it's true. classic American folk song. Do you Which think also John like Mayer makes me would feel so pod? fucking old? Well, that's the thing is like John Mayer's like hip now. Like, what is going on with this world? It's, We've strayed so far from the light. John Mayer's been John hip Mayer's since hip. no. John Mayer's been hip since the Playboy interview that made him disappear underground for a decade. <sighs> I, I'm I positive anyway, we've talked about that that before. 
I don't want I don't want Blink One Eighty Two to sound like John Mayer, and I hate the That's like fine. bouncy like yeah. the drum beat. I don't know. The, the to me the tempo and the drum beat is what's fucking it up because it's also like not slow and not fast. It's just like this like stupid mid tempo. I would say that this song is a ditty, and that's the problem with it. <laughs> so <laughs> I also want to know if the Boxing Day title is is designed to be a little bit clever because as far as I can tell, Boxing Day is more of a British thing. So we have it here in Canada, but it's not so much an American thing. Like they don't, they don't identify the day as such in the, in the way that like, you know, we've obviously adopted, you know, Black Friday and Cyber Monday and their entire sort of Thanksgiving, you know, timeline. But Boxing Day for us before we adopted all that was like, that's the big shopping day in Canada. Yeah, that's the sales. That's I mean, and that's totally what I've always re- associated with this say bargain. Yeah, really. just deals. <laughs> just give me some deals. And I always did think it was funny that all the deals come after Christmas. Like that's so fucked. <laughs> but I guess in America they figured it out. Maybe America's not so backwards after all. They're like, let's do deals before Christmas. Yeah, it's a better time for deals. <laughs> I mean, look. Any time is a good time for deals when you are uh, as responsible of a shopper as I am. (laughs) (laughs) No, I totally, Boxing Day to me is like thinking of people lining up at A&B Sound in Abbotsford trying to get um, maybe maybe like a a recordable DVD player where you can like record TV onto a DVD. Remember those? (laughs) Incredible (laughs) technology, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, something like that. That's what people are trying to go to or go to Future Shop, maybe. Oh, yeah. Is there Future Shop in Toronto? Remember Future Shop? Of course Shop? we had Future Shop. It was amazing. It had all of the most futuristic elements in one shop. It was shop. the future. Yeah. The future today. <laughs> um, that was like also one of those places where I always think of like those those – weird 90s big box stores that were like mostly there to sell televisions but then also would randomly have like a very limited CD section like I I distinctly remember that Future Shop is where I bought Hello Nasty uh, featuring uh, the the chick from Bikini Kill's husband whatever his name is Yeah, that was also the A&B sound model is like they lost money on CDs yeah. because I guess they thought you would come in every weekend and when you're buying a CD you would also buy a you know a big box TV <laughs> yeah. that weighs 200 pounds like every week. But I definitely I had know. friends and like new people who was like Boxing Day was like they went to the mall. Like everyone went, you know, you went downtown to, to, sh- to shop, which sounded like a nightmare. Did you have like or do you have a Boxing Day tradition, Josiah? Uh, I do now. We watched the, the big fat quiz of the year from the British TV. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of embarrassing to admit that you like British – panel shows to British people, but to North American people, the British panel shows are quite fun and funny. Yeah. Like, I feel like Jimmy Carr in Britain is, like, a piece of shit that everyone hates, but to me, he's pretty funny So, wait, still. what's the so, what's the big know. quiz show? It's, like, it's like two hours long, and they just, like, there's a bunch of celebs on teams, like Noel Fielding and Richard Iowati are always on it, and they, like, they pair up into three teams and they answer questions about like everything that happened in the last year. Well, that sounds delightful. Um, so it's a really fun way to revisit the year. And let me tell you, is the other guy from the team, trip there, these, these teams, they're really not, uh, they're really not trying. Oh. The stakes are quite low. And let me tell you, they're having some fun with it. <laughs> What's I remember, like, I don't think I even understood what panel shows were until I, I watched the trip movies and the guy who's not Steve Coogan. I was like, who is this man? Right. You're reading his Wikipedia. Rob they're Brydon. Like, like, th- he's a, he's a famous from doing panel shows. And you're like, that's not a thing. What on earth are you referring to? Panel shows are actually so good. But then, um, I just imagine, like, if they brought them over here, how fucking awful they'd be. Because there is, like, a Canadian girl who goes on them, and she's so annoying. Like, you, you need to have the British accent for it to work, I think. <laughs> right. Um, but the, it's fun. Like, someone they'll, like, bring someone out, and they'll be like, okay, name who this is. And it'll be, like, someone from a viral news story in April that you can't remember or whatever. <laughs> Just like a fun way to revisit the year and have a little giggle with all your British TV friends. <laughs> I love to giggle with Brits. It's one <laughs> of the things that's become so enjoyable about the pod. Right. What's your Boxing Day tradition? So uh, as soon as I uh, I got wifed up, um, it, so we used to do – there was some, some sort of family stuff that shifted. But uh, my mother-in-law uh, had the good fortune to be born on Boxing Day. So uh, Oh, shit. Yeah. So now Boxing Day is, uh, you know, the uh, Barbara Carter birthday celebration. We go to Mandarin and it fucking rocks. 
What? Is, sorry, what? Mandarin. You do what? We go to Mandarin. Do you not? What's that? What? I don't know what that is. What is it? Jesus Christ. An orange? You go to an orange? No, Mandarin is like the the pinnacle of all you can eat buffet luxury. <laughs> Wait, you say buffet? Well, as also? a way of classing it up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just to let people know that uh, I have no idea what Mandarin is. I never heard of it. Okay, is so it? Mandarin is ostensibly an all you can eat Chinese buffet, but it's very much like Chinese Canadian in that there's like a lot of pizza and French fries and like roast beef. Um, and, and, you know, chicken balls and, and the usual sort of Americanized, you know, Chinese food items. Um, and it's like this, you know, institution that I thought was Canadian and I'm now realizing might be restricted to Ontario. But it's like probably it's a, like, and that is that is very Ontario to think that it's all of Canada. <laughs> right. It's just Ontario. Yeah. So it's just this like incredible. Uh, you know, family friendly buffet experience where there was one weird time I had there where we were there with, with like for, for a birthday thing. And um, there were these two guys sort of like big white dudes sitting beside us. And one of them had the white pride worldwide tattoo on his forearm. <laughs> like, wait, and he was having dinner with your fa- with you? No, he was family? not with me or my family. <laughs> he was at a different table. <laughs> Um, but that was like the most upsetting thing I've ever seen in a mandarin. And I was like, you're, you're kind of at a Chinese restaurant. Like, there's no way you truly, like, maybe you shouldn't be here. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just like, I'm being generous. Um, oh, mandarin rocks though. I'm, I'm, I, I figured you would know what I was talking about. Mandarin. No. They got like a jingle and everything. Oh my God. So that's, All right, that's let's what get I'm back doing on today. track here. Yeah. Although the, I like that there's some very Chinese energy to this episode. There's Chinese buffet. I know. Maybe we're finally going to get the big. filmography of Bo Zing. Of course. <laughs> How do you think we're going to have to censor the pod for China? Because that's, of course, the big thing with media in China is <laughs> none of our, none of our gay kissing can stay uh, in the pod when it goes to China. <laughs> the pod is just one big gay kiss, <laughs> really. Yeah, so. that's, that's why we haven't been able to crack that lucrative market yet. <laughs> Um, I think, I think you asked the question, uh, like if he was being clever with calling it boxing right, day. Right. That was my question. Is like to an American. Is I that think, like- here's what I think. I think that Tom realized that there's no song about boxing day and it was like clearly a market share kind of thing. Right. He's like, there's no, and there is no other, I don't think there's any other song. I'm looking at a Vox article about boxing day in pop culture. There's a 2012 British film called boxing day. Mm. Um, there's a 2000, what year is this one from? There's another one, 2007, about an alcoholic father. So there's two films called Boxing Day. Neither of them, like, no one gives a shit about them. Then there was an episode of MASH called Twas the Day After Christmas. But other than that, the only song about Boxing Day, as far as I can tell, is by Blink-182. Incredible. Now, something that also ties Blink to Boxing Day, which is quite interesting, is that um, Boxing Day is a mostly, it, it seems like officially, we are correct, a, a bigger deal in uh, you know former uh, British Commonwealth countries um, who sort of celebrated in its own way. It's you know UK, Canada, Australia, Trinidad and Tobago in, in New Zealand is where it's the most associated with deals. Um, and generally, it's not observed in the United States, except in Massachusetts, where we know the governor currently... Uh, is is a big old blink head. Yeah, maybe is, that's why. Which, what's that governor's and name? This guy is not uh, the current Charlie Charlie Baker. Also, I just realized as I was saying that that um, Danny, aka MXPX memes, he has a Reliant K podcast, and he would probably come to my home and slit my throat if I didn't mention that Reliant K also has a song called Boxing <laughs> Right. Day. So glad that so. you protected your neck. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean that's. So I still do think that Tom was like, you know what could work, boys, if we do a Boxing Day song. Do you think? And he probably also predicted that Bo Zing was going to be lighting up the charts. Right. Uh, film, <laughs> filmically. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. I don't know. To me, it seemed like um, they probably they wrote a song about getting dumped the day after Christmas. Like someone who just like waits until like, okay, we're in the clear. And then they were like, what's a, oh, it turns out in some former British Commonwealth countries... Uh, this day has a has a name, <laughs> right? Yeah, because if they knew about Boxing Day, they would be sing. They would make some reference to deals. In exactly, here, it'd be like you broke my heart, like, but um, door crashing. Yeah, there's a door crashing breaking. Uh, like, but the only thing you crashed was 
the gates of oh no, it's terrible. I'm the sorry. the TV you promised was only on the flyer. Um, the off brand one was all that was left in store. <laughs> you whore. <laughs> wow. Something like that. <laughs> You're escalating things uh, quite severely, <laughs> my man. I'm sorry. It's ever since Tom started talking about feminism <laughs> stuff, I've been red pilled. <laughs> Um. <laughs> oh man, we, I was having lunch with my family yesterday and we were trying to explain uh, someone being red pilled. Um, and it was like the most that I've just felt like worms like fully had taken over my brain. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my mother and father being like, right, what? So, okay. And I'm like, okay, uh, do you remember the Matrix? They were like, no. I'm like, okay, so I'm starting by explaining the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, so good. <laughs> you know, if you like grew up going to youth group, the Matrix is actually like so Christian. Like every oh, really? week, just be like, let's talk about the Matrix. Yeah. Mm. So we'll see. I'm curious how the Matrix Four. Maybe maybe I'll start going to youth group again when that comes out. Just to see, <laughs> right, just to see how it enlivens the conversation. <laughs> so I guess this song is about getting dumped on Bo- on Bozing Day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Don't- I, I'm pretty confused. Like, what is worst painkiller that all in filler? The apart and departed look in my eyes. I love just like Tom is so dumb, and then when dumb Tom is trying to be poetic, it becomes beautiful. Worst, yeah. What? What? What is? There's an annotation here. What is the? What is some more helpful? The annotation I feel like say. is not. I don't think it helps. The look in his eye separates himself from his body and is emotionless over his loss. Um. They're, and they're saying it's referring to his prescription painkiller addiction, which I'm not really, I'm not really seeing other than the word painkiller. Is also like, <laughs> is there any chance this is a like a misheard, you know, like wrapped up like a douche kind of scenario? Right. Yeah. Because I mean, also, I don't think I don't even know if Dogs Eating Dogs has been released physically yet or not. Maybe it has. Who cares about that kind of detail? But I do think definitely people didn't have a lyric sheet of this ever. Yeah, so I, it seems entirely possible to me that, like, that's just too much of a word salad. Yeah, I don't know. But the, the other no- notable thing about the lyrics is I think this is the f- the only time in the history of Blink, and especially post-Owl City, that we get a song where we get to hear Tom DeLonge, the original Owl City, Owl City voice, sing Fireflies. Like he says, we could reignite like fireflies, like an atom bomb. Terrible lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I just always wished that I could hear Tom DeLonge sing an Owl City song. And here is the closest we'll ever get. This is basically it. Is Owl City becoming like one of the only artists that we know how to refer to? I mean, like, I like so. the last couple of weeks, but it kind of reminds me <laughs> a little bit of a little little group called Owl City. <laughs> yeah, we used to just reference uh, Jandek and Shushu, <laughs> and now we reference Owl City. Yeah, it just shows <laughs> our <laughs> brains melting, expanding our palate. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what is there anything else in these lyrics? I think it's also. I think Mark is the worst on this song. And it's especially when the song gets the most jaunty, and then he comes in and... S- I mean, his voice sounds nice, but something about it, I'm just like, it kind of grosses me well, out. it's funny that your your uh, your joke impression of Mark earlier involved him mostly writing songs about drowning in the ocean, because his contribution here is about being swept beneath the wave of your goodbye. Like, this, someone needs to get this man away from the water, I think. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, what the fuck are any of these lyrics at all? Like, talking about an atom bomb, and then there's something about mom and dad. I think Tom is always talking about mom and dad, too. He has some real uh, Oedipal complex going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I will follow this trail to tomorrow with my loneliness and sorrow all through the night. Sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, just the bridges and the waters, their clues left behind. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> Wait, sons, sons and daughters, mothers, and their fathers. Sorry. So, oh. So the father of the son, so it's only, it's really only grandpas here. <laughs> right. Because they're skipping a generation when it comes to the father. So young people. Um, which maybe it was sort of a nod towards Tom's kind of father's rights mentality now. <laughs> right. <laughs> sons and daughters, mothers, and their fathers. Huh. But also their fathers is plural. So it's, it's, it's sort of like, okay, you've got a son and a daughter, their mom, and then that mom has two dads. So it's actually a, an inclusive holiday anthem. 
<laughs> and if well, you think about it, that's like that's three generations removed. Like to be in a in an out gay couple, like these are grandparents. They're they're you know that would have been um, a, a different time in terms of the sort of uh, like mainstream acceptance of uh, of homosexual relationships. And so this is actually a story of um, you know pioneering bravery, um, which is I think that's that's an exciting theme and story right, that's that we haven't the bri- seen. That's the bridges and the waters that he's talking about in the next thing. Right. From bridging the gap. Totally. Yeah. Uh, into From hate to acceptance. Damn. Th- thanks, Tom. <laughs> this is the LGBTQ anthem that we did not know that we needed for Blink-182. And it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I don't know. Fortunately, we can stop talking about the lyrics now because there's like a lot of shit to dig into related to Ooh. this song. Um, And the first thing I want to talk about is, actually, it's not just Reliant K and Blink. And I wasn't pretending that I didn't know earlier. I genuinely am so tired right now that I I don't remember all the notes. Right. Okay. So this is a revelation (laughs) to you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But this is kind of cool. This is from 2006. Um, And not only that, but it has the magical number of 10,055 views, which is just like, come on. Are you kidding me? 155 is everywhere, baby. God damn. Um, so this is way before Blink's one, I guess. What, six years before? Is that right? Is that the right math? Is that how, yeah, that seems like math. Yeah. So this is six years before, almost to the day. This is called Carol of the Boxing Day. I think this band is called Holiday Hipster. That's, maybe? Yeah, maybe it's a one-off, but that is certainly how they've keyed this video. And to me, this is like the ultimate... Blink-182 Boxing Day song by accident. So I think Holiday Hipsters this is by. Um, there's a music video with this and everything. Oh, and there's a Canadian flag. Yeah, it starts off with a, with a guy waving a Canadian flag in front of some sort of uh, statue. Is that Sir Johnny McDonald, I think? I don't know. Or well, he's holding a phone. Maybe that's Alexander Graham Bell. And when I click through to Holiday Hipsters, it says they're from Virginia. What? Boxing Day is finally here. Waited an entire year for this holiday to get it started. Let's all go back to feudal times where kings and queens get punched. This is, there's like a music video for this pop punk song, and it's so dorky, but in a great way. There's a lot of like uh, uh, very 90s hammy pop punk poses despite this coming from 2006 it's great So dorky and charming this is, and bad. There's a lot of that guy with the Canadian flag running around. You're telling me this band is not from Canada? I don't know. But also, like, something about how this is filmed, it looks like it's green screened, but then just green screened to make it look like they're in an even shittier basement than wherever the green screen would have been. <laughs> That's <laughs> so great. I mean, it looks like they had a Facebook page, but I can't get through to Oh, here we go. Well, Troy. This is a different we holiday. The, we found the man that Troy. What? No, this. They, I clicked through on the about page to the, and it's the guy who is always wearing his hat crookedly in such a punchable way. Oh, that's a broken link. And and he's wearing a hat on his Facebook page mm. that uh, he's wearing a hat that says Go, Go America. America. Yeah. So I don't think I, I think this I think they just had a Canadian flag for some reason. Well, because of Boxing Day. Um, yeah, the, the holiday hipsters who currently have Facebook.com slash holiday hipsters uh, appear to be a uh, a caroling group uh, <laughs> that also go. Uh, they're the caroling cuties. They say. Um, <laughs> Very good. And you can you can book them for your uh, for your party if you live in. Uh, I don't know where this is. The eight eight one eight area code. So if you're in that area, uh, give. Uh, Give these holiday hipsters a call. Well, that's but that's the wrong one. That's not the one. Doing no, this, different one. Uh, I'm just advertising a, a couple of Carol and Cuties now. That song kind of like sounded almost like piebald to me. <laughs> oh yeah, but, totally. But like, but like <laughs> a bit more it energy. Um, maybe. Yeah, like uh, all uh, it guys. <laughs> yeah, high harmonic piebald for sure. <laughs> okay. That in addition to that, there's a band called Boxing Day, um, and I just. 
this video is very well shot, first of all, and it's like the classic, it's kind of like the Green Day video for um, when I come around, they're just like walking around downtown, but they're walking around downtown Portland. But the thing is, the song is called Groupie, and I think it's about like someone who's a groupie for this band Boxing Day. And this band is like, these kids are like nine years old, I want to say. That's, Am I exaggerating? No. Like, how, how old are these kids? Uh, they might be 11. They're so young. And then the weirdest part is, like, they kind of got some hooks. So the video starts with them kind of waking up like they've fallen asleep practicing. And now they're, like, walking like the, the mean streets of Portland. Yeah. They, they go to Powell's Books at one point. Oh, It sounds like a Third Eye Blind album track. Yeah, totally. I'll never let you go. <laughs> He's wearing an odd future sure, donut yeah. shirt. food truck and I guess uh, singing about the groupie what is the end of a groupie will you be what with me could could you be happy with me I think the thing is I think this band fucking rules <laughs> yeah. it sounds sick it's so good no boxing day band like, is is uh they're cool boys. These tiny little Portland boys. I bet you all of their parents are like um, in Harvey Danger or something. <laughs> like they, they're probably like, or like who? Else, or wait, who's from Portland again? Uh, the Thermals. Uh, um, fuck. Don't, no. <laughs> don't go there. Wait, what? The, wait, did something happen? The band. What's the band from Dig again? Not Brian Jones, Tim Esco. Oh, the Dandy one. Warhols. Yeah, I think. Are they from Portland? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Everclear is. Everclear is from Portland? No, like Oregon somewhere. I don't know. There's like so many Oregonians that uh, listen to the, the, the Dandy Warhols are uh, the Decemberists. <laughs> God, this okay. This Blitz band of like Trapper, three twelve year olds is so much cooler than the Decemberists and Blitz and Trapper. Um, so, anyways, that was some cool little boys from Portland that I found, and I think they're great. And I'm just I'm glad that at least they're. Their take on groupies was just fairly innocent and, and childlike and not um, creepy. Or I don't think I realized that the wipers were from Portland. Oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna edit that out <laughs> for your own sake. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why didn't you say the wipers then? Because <laughs> I don't think these kids would be the sons of the wipers. Oh, just because it didn't work with your joke, not because you're better and yeah. punker than me. <laughs> Moving along to something that's a little more your speed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> someone has mashed it up with Smash Mouth All-Star. And normally I wouldn't play this because, A, Smash Mouth refuses to come on the pod. And so they're pieces of scum to me. <laughs> and, B, I kind of think, well, I have mixed feelings about the All-Star mashup world online. I mean, it's fun, obviously. It's funny. I kind of started it in a way, <laughs> if you think about it. Right. So, yeah, it's hard, hard to be too mad. But I feel like it's kind of an easy joke sometimes. I mean, in but then I also still think the joke is funny. It's like kind of like Guy Fieri is like he's. It's such an easy joke, but it's still. I still kind of like the easy joke too. That's the thing. Just yeah, existing. I think as long as people don't act like it's uh, like a shock. Like if you're just like, hey, here's this insanely dumb other way that I interpreted this thing that has already been repurposed. You know what I mean? I think it's all. It, it's a little bit in the framing. Yeah. True. Okay. Well, this one I think. I mean, like if someone shared someone this saying, as like lol epic, actually that would be the perfect framing for it. So, right. Well, this guy Kieran who shared it said, "I thought this mashup was funny. Hope a few of you think so as well." Made this on Cubase in about half an hour. Perfect. So, yeah, that's good. That's a good. That's a good starting point. Yeah. Um, and actually, it works really well together. So here we go.
good. I mean, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it works really well. It's it improves really both good. songs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was good. I don't know what I was talking about. Like Smash Mouth is very funny. Smash Mouth is still funny. It's it's kind of those things that can really like survive the beating. Like you know that they will be with you forever. Like at this point, there's yeah, never. There's it's not like in ten years it. you're going to be over Smash Mouth. <laughs> It's true. Yeah, it, that's true. That was great. If anything, in ten years, they're going to have like a sincere comeback. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Fuck, that was great. Um, okay, there's a special kind of like, I don't know, this this feels like a sort of pre-Instagram kind of, I guess, when did Instagram start? This is from 2013, but it feels like this is kind of like a pre-Instagram sort of fuckboy hmm. in this video. What was, maybe like, maybe he like, was a hipstamatic fuckboy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something, I mean, these two guys, so this is for a class. It's Blink-182 Boxing Day Media Coursework, uploaded by Alex Wood. One of the guys in this video, the name is Macaulay. Could you imagine naming the kid Macaulay? No. (laughs) And the timing of it would be perfect. I mean, obviously, the parents were like, yeah, let's name him after um, Home Alone. I was trying to think of one of the more obscure Macaulay Culkin movies. Good son. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so these guys, like, have, like, somehow... I don't know. They look like Vine influencer kind of guys. But was Vine is? Am I crazy? Was Vine in 2013? No, there's no way. When, yeah, I guess it was at the beginning of 2013. So maybe it's perfect timing for these guys to be Viner type guys. But they just sort of like I, don't, I think it's just the song. Maybe I'm wrong. It must be for like a film class, but. They're like in like a in like a tunnel in a park, and they're just sort of like m- like posing for the camera so much and lip syncing so like sexily, like sexy Vine boys. This is so weird. Like it's not a it's not a cover, right? It's just them being s- yeah. It's just them lip syncing for school. Cool, cool. They're just being like very sexy in the woods. He's like walking around a field with like his arms sort of half outstretched like he's like in the Iris Blue <laughs> Dolls video. And the other guy, I'm trying to think which one is named Macaulay. I'm guessing it's the one with the one dangly. You really? Earring. I thought the other guy was more um, of a Macaulay. And, Actually, Harry Austin. I mean, I know, that's the, also like an influencer ass name. Yeah, I think the other I think the other guy is Harry Austin cuz he has sort of like the confidence of someone who wasn't named after the kid from Home Alone, whereas the other guy has like he's definitely knows that everyone's <laughs> yeah, laughing yeah. at him. He's, his he's lived Macaulay. a very particular existence. <laughs> but yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, I wish people could see this because I can't <laughs> stop looking at it. They're so dreamy. Also, they they just kind of like they seem like hot. Yeah, bullies, yeah, yeah. Like there's no say. way these guys are these nice. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but like, so bully me good. any day, Harry Austin, um, you know? Boxing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, a, I'm more really? of a Macaulay no, man, I like to the be brashness honest, but, of just um, like uh, <laughs> Harry Austin. There's a couple of shots. I also just wonder like, when they decided that Harry was definitely going to be the front man and Macaulay was mostly just going to kind of cold <laughs> chill in the background and play acoustic guitar. Because there's like, a, lot of, like, a lot of eye contact from... Because M- Macaulay also, like, straight up no, cannot yeah. play guitar. Whereas there's, like, real, real <laughs> dreamy, intimate close-ups of, of Harry later on. And it is Harry. I'm looking at the other videos. The mm. name is definitely Harry. Uh, we, got, we definitely you're, nailed the name. totally right. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, okay. I guess this is a parody, but it's also, like, very sincere. Like, it's not... It's not it's not the normal misunderstanding of the word parody where they just put anything on the internet and say that it's a parody to avoid mm-hmm. like copyright issues. This is not a parody because it's not funny, but they have changed the lyrics to make it about something else. So I don't know. Is there a word for that? Is it like mm, a remix? Yeah, let's call I think a remix seems good. This, this person, Derek Zoya, um, has called mm. it a rewrite, a lyrical rewrite. I don't know. I mean, that's a reinterpretation. Weird too. Um, many thanks to user 
Tim Ball for making this awesome instrumental. Okay, that's why. Because at the bottom it says, all rights to the music belong to Blink-182 and Tim Ball. And I'm like, who the <laughs> fuck is Tim Ball? And then all the lyrical rights are those of Derek Zoya. So this is called Resolution Day. Um, it's kind of put a little funky spin on it by making the song take place five or six days after the original, <laughs> I guess. So fun. <laughs> Like that, that thing, that thing we all say. Yeah, I mean, people can't talk, uh, can't stop talking about what they're going to do on the eve of the new year. <laughs> and so, unfortunately, uh, for some, they're going to be leaving Derek Zoya um, because <laughs> <laughs> because he keeps changing the song, the song's lyrics to different things. The eve of you know? the new year. <laughs> That's some real like Mark. I feel like they, they've at least effectively channeled the Mark lyric spirit of just like what? What? No one's ever said that that way, and not in a way where you're like, what a what a fascinating new way of looking at an idea. But <laughs> yeah, just sort of just like, like not like hundred percent sure if English is someone's first language. Kind of feel a little bit dizzy. Yeah. Instead. Um, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I guess that's a pair. I mean, I guess that could be a new genre of parody where you just like take a song and change the lyrics to be about something else in a way that is neither funny nor interesting. <laughs> just kind of like it's like a normcore parody. Yeah. Just complete dead. <laughs> Here's just another way they could have taken it. And you're like, okay, it's not quite as good. Right. All right. Neat. Like you, instead of I miss you, it's like I'm with you. <laughs> I'm like you're still with the person. Right. Like, yeah. Just, just, I know what my age is. You're just like, <laughs> ask me, ask me anytime, right away. I've got the I answer. Know. Yeah, I fucking know what my age is. Yeah, and I, I behave accordingly. <laughs> Friday night, I'll take you out. I'm an adult. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's our third date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not going to have to talk to your parents about it because we're in our thirties. It's cool. <laughs> Uh, well, shout out to Derek Zoya for inventing a new genre of uh, reinterpreting art. Mm. It's fascinating so, to sort of see the world through someone else's eyes, which is, of course, the experience that I come to this podcast for, <laughs> as, with, as with any great art. Sam, are you ready for covers? Covers! Or what? Yes! Covers! I think officially the cover theme song is just the Nightcore version, always. Mm. Isn't that guitar? Have you... Have you stopped plugging in the cover song? Yeah. Ooh, sounds like a Mumford song now. And I'll <laughs> let you know. Hey! Uh, hey! Yeah. <laughs> Saving the sound goes on a winter's mind. Right. Oh, it's wait, this. It's the tempo that I don't like, and it's way better. Yeah, this is this fucking version. great. Mom 
Comfort and Sons totally uh, did the same problem as Star Wars, I think. I haven't seen the new Star Wars yet, but everyone's saying that they just, like, read read it and listened to their critics too much and then, like, fucked everything up so badly. And I think that's what Mumford and Sons did. Like, I think I've even mm. said this before, but if they were still just doing wedding reception music, they'd be, everyone would love them by now. It's true. Yeah. All of those songs are fucking monster hits. <laughs> yeah. They're so good. But then they, like, made an album where they're, like, trying to... I feel like they made, like, a double album where they're, like, exploring rock music. Like, what a yeah. terrible idea. The no, fuck are you doing? Just keep, like, reinterpreting, like, how you remember the Down From The Mountain tour going. And that's good enough for the rest of us. Yeah, exactly. So that was the Nightcore version. I mean, what can be said about Nightcore other than... It just makes everything better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um... So up next, we've got a remix of the song from someone named A. Willy. So maybe it's A. Willy? Maybe? I'm thinking it might be a joke about a penis because the only comment on the SoundCloud is someone saying, Tom has no dick. No dick at all. <laughs> um, so. All right. Cool. <laughs> it's really when you read certain comments out loud, you just think, I wonder if anyone ever knew that this would be read, read aloud. <laughs> For an audience. <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah, exactly. We have a, we have a very dumb power. <laughs> about uh, making electronic mu- music, but I feel like that was a really, really bad remix. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel the same. I'm <laughs> being very tell. limited. I, this one <laughs> made me feel like a bit of a willy for us giving it this platform. <laughs> Although, and now you've made me feel insecure about bringing up the Mr. Owl himself, but especially in this context, <laughs> hearing Tom say, like fireflies um, was really good. It made me think of... <laughs> right. Owl, Owl Town. <laughs> right, knockoff, yeah. I thought you were going to be like, all this talk about Willie's making me insecure. Like, just when you're talking about <laughs> Willie's and then you mentioned insecurity, I assumed you were going to take that to a much realer emotional place. <laughs> oh, no. There's no insecurity there. Why, if, if, I was insecu- if I was an insecure person, why would I be hosting a Blink-192 podcast? No. Really? <laughs> There's no way like, you'd be looking for this like incredibly <laughs> peculiar type of validation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, here's another remix. This is by C. <laughs> Wilson. Jeez, I actually give a shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do give a shit because the art on this one is so interesting. The, the art is like very, I can't tell if they're joking or not, which makes it way better, or like if it's kind of deliberate. So I think it's maybe deliberate, but yeah, they kind of, it almost looks like the orchid skull, but like created an MS paint. And then I feel like there's like MS DOS at the bottom or something. Like it looks like there's code on this album cover. Yeah. It's, it's got like, but not like proper throwback. That's what I mean. It doesn't look like a deliberate, like, yo, we're going to make it look like DOS. It just yeah. like, it just sort of looks like maybe it was actually made with some sort of DOS based design program. <laughs> what was, what did you fuck with on DOS? What did I fuck with on DOS? Yeah. I had, like, the honestly, I will say this, the most transformative sort of DOS experience that I ever had was uh, I, I went to school with this kid named Diego, and I wish I could remember his last name, but I thought Diego was, like, a fairly cool name, so that stuck out for me, and he was only in our school for a year, and he gave me, a, like, a three-and-a-half-inch uh, disc that had, MIDI like, t- two MIDI files on it and, like, a MIDI, a DOS MIDI player, and... Yeah, and it was like this transformative. Like it played, um, it played "Smells Like Teen Spirit," but for some reason it said, and because it was a MIDI file, so you couldn't hear the lyrics. But I think it said it was a cover of uh, "Smells Like Nirvana." It was a MIDI version of "Smells Like Nirvana," <laughs> we, so, which is identical to the Nirvana right. version, save for the lyrics, which you could not hear in the MIDI. And it, in my mind, I like, pl- like, like fucked that disc up just listening to I can only remember what the other song was, but just like the ability to sort of like play music in that way because it was so new to us, right? As like So you didn't even know. play games on DOS though? 
I wasn't a big gamer. We had we had Leisure Suit Larry, which uh, like Whoa. I have no I have no memory of. Uh, but I remember like scrolling around on it, and that's it. And I now recognize that that game was like <laughs> fucked as hell. Wait, was your dad playing it or something? Like, how'd you get that in your house? I, it was on the computer, and so I don't know if my dad was a real Larry head. Which is like, <laughs> here's the thing: like, not my dad's vibe, like at all. Uh, well, you don't know, but it's the dad after dark. Once he once he starts. Uh, Doing run colon C or whatever. I don't remember how to do it. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe things got weird. What about you? What was your what was your? Yeah, it's, I like choice? that it's family computer season. It is. I love it because it's you don't think about it, but it's like uh, it, it, to me, it, it's reminiscent of the of the um, like video rental store thing that we're going to be the only generation that had the experience of, of of renting like VHS and then DVDs. Like that's limited to this very small window of time, and they were like it was a very cool way to 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 sort of experience like learning about movies and stuff and hanging out with your friends and shit. Well, and so same thing with the family yeah, computer. Like it's the same absolutely. specific sort of moment. Well, the, the story I shared last week about, um, ruining the family computer while my dad was defragging. Uh, that was the second time I shared that story. On the pod. <laughs> I've been informed. So that's pretty great. But my MS DOS, I, I don't, I don't really know where we would get the games from. I remember you used to be able to get at London Drugs or Future Shop or AMB Sound like CDRs that said like a thousand and one games or something, and we'd play mm. some of those games. But then I think we downloaded some because I remember playing these like oh, wow contraband games on MS DOS where you would like shoot Barney the dinosaur and blow him up and kill him, and I thought it was wow. so cool because I fucking hated Barney and I still do. Are you kidding me, Barney? You want me to clean up? Fuck you. Um, and then also, <laughs> my brother and I were obsessed with this game called Marshmallow Duel, where we would like fight each other. Um, and that one definitely also did put a virus on the family computer. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I also I have this very distinct memory of playing like a racing game that I don't remember the name. It was like a really like rudimentary, obviously like it was like a track like NASCAR type racing game. Um, and it but it didn't have like really any good sound effects or anything. And so this was like I had just I, I clearly had a Walkman. And someone had lent me Smash by The Offspring, and I didn't care for. I was fairly fucking young at this. Guy. I was probably was around when Smash came out, so I was like a nine year old or whatever. Um, didn't care for Smash in its entirety. Only liked the song "What in the World Happened to You," and made myself a tape of "What in the World Happened to You" like for the entire side of a tape, and then would just <laughs> play this racing game and sit <laughs> uh, like at, at the family computer listening to a like half hour mega mix of an offspring ska song about not smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we were definitely listening to Collective Soul while playing. Oh Marshmallow sick. Duel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyways, all of that is to say this is by C. Wilson and C. Wilson describes here, it's literally just Blink 182's Boxing Day, but transcribed and adapted as a chip tune cover. Mm. chunk of that sounds like all-star right it does yeah I think that must so, be why the mashup works so well yeah or did this person do because i can't really think of how the song sounds anymore is like <laughs> did this person make a chiptune version of that mashup i will go ahead and say sure why not <laughs> uh yeah i don't i think that's the true song i don't know if i wish i knew what was if that was actually literally like is there 
are there people who who say death to false chip tune? Like, was that actual chip tune? Were they using some sort of hacked Game Boy or something, or was it mm. like just a MIDI thing? I'm not. I'm not sure. It's not my place, really. But at the same time, I like the idea of there being drama in the chip tune community. I'd like to know about it. And so. you like stoking it too, which I appreciate. Exactly. Yeah, someone has to. Um, Okay, I wish I had saved those ones for the end because it, it's about to get a lot fucking worse. Oh, fuck, um, man. Like, how many acoustic versions of this do we need? We know what it sounds like. <laughs> well, first, we've got – this is a new thing that I've discovered. This one I'm going to say is an accidental gex while we're still in the electronic <laughs> section. So this uh, – this That's uploaded a good – hey, you should, you should t- have you tweeted about this yet? <laughs> no, not yet. I mean, I guess when this comes out um, on Bozing Day, we can talk about the accidental gex. On Twitter, but this is by M. Her Jom, I think. M H E R J O M on SoundCloud. Um, it's a homemade soundtrack production from six years ago. If this is not an accidental gex, I don't know what is. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it just needed one more turn. The, so the melody is, I, I don't know, I feel like I this totally fucking escaped me earlier. The melody is just all-star. That's why that mashup works. Yeah, I guess so. Um, also, the acoustic intro at the start, I think, is some sort of classic rock, acoustic folk rock song. I think it's like definitely a s- stolen from something, but I can't figure out what it is. It almost sounds like Four Non Blondes or something. The acoustic hmm, right, maybe, we'll, intro. maybe we'll figure it out by the end. Hopefully. But um, so... You're, you're worried about acoustic covers. What you don't realize is that the thing you need to be most worried about is pop punk covers of this song. And so that's what we're going to get into now. And it's mm. um, going to be very frustrating and bad um, for the most part. <laughs> I don't remember if this one's bad or not, but this is uh, from 2012. It's someone named Dave Days. And he has some sort of logo beside his name. Oh, I guess this is his official artist channel on YouTube. Dave Days. Um and again, these these YouTubers just really use words however they want. Because the the caption says, Blink-182 recently released their new song, Boxing Day, off their Christmas EP, Dogs Eating Dogs. As a big Blink fan, I thought it'd be ironically necessary to do a pop punk cover. Um, so is, is this ironically necessary? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe? What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Something to just think about while we listen to this. <laughs> I mean, the video too says pop punk cover with a question mark. Like he's really being subversive by doing this. Opening this one earlier, I thought to myself, this is a pop punk cover of the song, and it made me realize that I think I do still hate pop punk. For all the for how much I've talked about loving pop punk, I think I was wrong, maybe. It, that <laughs> right. is a that is correctly tagged as a pop punk cover of this, and it's significantly worse than the last one, and it makes me feel like a an infant while I watch it. I feel like I'm being infantilized by it. 
Yeah, I didn't I didn't enjoy that experience because I knew that it was targeted at me and I understood <laughs> every, I understood every little splash symbol, like every sound resonated with me yeah. and I knew in that moment I had lost. <laughs> exactly. We yeah. fucked up and yet it, and yet it gets so much worse. So this one I think mm. was described as pop punk ish. Not necessarily mm. pop punk. Um, this is a band called Love Electric, but the E of love is also the E to start electric. So I guess they're called Love Electric, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good name. Um, and this is like has some pretty high production quality as like they're playing in, I don't know, like a practice space that has writing all over the wall to make it. It, it almost looks like a music video, kind of. Um, and there's the, like some fake vintage archive with with sort of film strips running on either side of it. <laughs> and the best part is when they start performing, there's like it, it kind of looks like a, a shitty version of that No Doubt album cover with all the painting on it. Or I think Simple Creatures, Mark's band did that, too. But the best part is on the door frame, they've done like kind of a checkerboard symbol that actually looks exactly like the Woolworm logo. Um, devoid of context, so maybe they're big time worm heads, just like me. Um, but here's what the band Love Electric sounds like. Like, whatever you imagine they're doing while they're playing their guitars and however you imagine they look while they're rocking out is exactly what you think. Yeah, yeah. It, as soon as it's... Because I had the video running for a while, and once the sound started, I was like, oh, of course. The guy who's belting it out is wearing a deep purple V with like a American apparel hoodie, but it's like a vest version over top. Right. And then he has like dog tag. It's like that whole video. I feel like 2013 was too recent for those people to look and sound like that. Yeah. I also like watching this video. This is a thing I've been thinking about a little bit with, with other videos we watch or just generally like sometimes like bands we've played. It's like I recently started listening to some old crime and stereo records. And I was remembering, like, I've only seen Crime and Stereo once, and I was so put off by, like, this. And I really liked a couple of those albums. The singer just, like, really, like, it was at a uh, an after show at Fest, so it was, like, in a fucking storage locker, like, on the outskirts of the city for, you know, uh, 50 kids. And the singer was, like, definitely acting like they were playing in front of a thousand people. And I was like, I get it, because you're projecting being in a band, but also like, it's really embarrassing. And it like really put me off the band for a while. <laughs> and these guys are sort of doing the same thing where it's like, they're selling it. Like they're absolutely selling it. And like, what is the line between, because like we all like bands, like even like if we're being honest with ourselves, we like bands that act like they're like big and they're performing and they're like of a different breed than you or I. Right. Like I've seen prenup videos. Like you, you do not act like a cool guy, rock star. I am similarly incapable of that performance, but like, what is the the line that separates like people who can get away with like just being like, yeah. And you're like, yes, that guy's fucking cool. And these guys who are being like, yeah. And I'm like, please stop. <laughs> I don't know. It's a I mean, fine line, right? Do you, do you agree with me? Do you know what I'm saying? I think I do, but okay, first of all, I think in this video, these people seem like the kind of people who have never once in their life had a single moment of self-doubt. And that's one problem. <laughs> where it's yeah. just like some <laughs> self-doubt is probably healthy, maybe. But then also I think like uh, – I think I've said this before, but I like – my cool guys and bands, cool people and bands that have a, a certain aloofness. Like I almost prefer if they're like kind of like not like selling it like they want me to sign up for their street team, but it's more like they're withholding something and that's why I want to buy all their merch because they're like I want to know I get what they're withholding. Yeah, that's fair. But then you think about like I, we recently both – you got me to listen to it and I fell in love with it. The new Third Eye Blind. And a guy like Stephen Jenkins – acts like he, he should be famous and has sort of since the beginning days of that band. And personally, I find it quite charming. 
Yeah, but I think with that, it's like... These guys are doing nothing if not acting like Stephen Jenkins from Third Eye Blind, who I find a very <laughs> acceptable uh, sort of uh, <laughs> aspiring I mean, I just, rock star. I think it's also like to do with what they're wearing. Like, these guys are dressed just so... Like, this is like four separate um, viral Tinder nightmare screenshots at once. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, maybe that's, that's part of the problem. And also because it sounds like fucking dog shit. Is the other thing right? The sound, yeah, the sound is not helping it. I mean, I think the pro- I think what you're revealing is you cannot discern good from bad in general. <laughs> that that is the essence of what I'm trying to <laughs> articulate yeah, for sure. Here's, here's another pop punk one. This is a band called My Sunrise. Everyone thought it'd be just so fucking funny, or maybe ironically necessary to do a pop mm. punk cover of this. So this is My Sunrise. <laughs> Okay, I like this so far. I want to make that very clear. I do too, except I don't like those synths. You know, you remember, I don't like synths. Five years ago, not that long ago. Like, isn't this music from... It, doesn't this sound like something from 12 years ago? Am I yeah. missing something here? Well, I got some great news for you. One of the reasons for that is absolutely because this band is Russian. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that helps a lot, actually. And so, yeah. Uh, um, uh, so, so some of what we're experiencing is a little bit of that kind of disconnect is for sure just like a cultural... Uh, lag. <laughs> well, look at their photo too. It's like very like 2007. One of the dudes is is like holding up a stocking and wearing a Santa hat and then puking a rainbow into it. Like this like looks like these four people look like they are Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, they've also been uploading, I guess, all of their old songs to their Facebook page. This is already in 2015 as uh, .rar .rar files and rar file I've actually never tried to pronounce that one out loud I would have said rar file but I was <laughs> concerned well the music is very rar as well the music is very rar <laughs> uh, so this is easy core pop punk from Kemerov Ke- oh fuck Kemerovo Russia amazing well um, oh that's great hold on can <laughs> we I just real real quick I would love to hear um, this was their own because like where do you take that sound like that sort of like four years strong meets like crunk core uh, vibe yeah. so this is this is this is their last this is I think their most recent song so was, an original song for my sunrise called don't trust the, the this song urges everyone to think own head and to be responsible for your actions. I wonder if they're saying think with your own head or like own your head or think ahead. But either way, this, this song is about th- they want you to think own head. Doing all the bells and whistles. Maybe maybe it was like a Christmas song, so like let's just do everything at once. 
But on their, <laughs> on their regular single, they're kind of like a bit more restri- – they're classy about it, you know? Yeah, I'm a little I'm a little disappointed to to sort of I think they've minimized what ultimately made them exciting for me personally uh, in that in that cover. That's that's still pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, um, I was gonna save this one for later, but since we're in the pop punk section, this one is actually very good, um, and I didn't need to look it up, but I did to confirm, and I was right. This band is from Indonesia. They're called Ramadi Wow, um, and they've done a cover of Boxing Day. That has a different song in it as well. And it's so sick. They're like running in swim trunks this whole time. Take back everything bad I said about pop punk earlier because that's just, yeah that's fucking incredible. Pop punk lives. <laughs> Not now I now I take back what I took back from you saying that. <laughs> I don't Sorry. like it again. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> oh, I, I, I apologize for complicating things. <laughs> we gotta go to Indonesia. I mean, this is we ridiculous. gotta go. That's like the cutest video I've ever seen. I love. We these were guys. gonna make it a Patreon tier. Why do we not have Indonesia? I'm upset. It's fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. That that one was amazing, and now now I'm gonna clear house on a few more very terrible ones before we go on with our days, and then our families can open their Christmas presents. Uh, <laughs> just been sitting here. People are it. people are looking at me with uh, a great deal of uh, I guess resentment <laughs> is how I would describe the eyes currently upon me. So this band is called Marietta Drive, um, <laughs> which is a great name. They're in the forest. Uh, and I mean, it's what, what is the hue on this? It's, it's very like hard rock. Like it kind of looks like a stain video, I would say. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is a GoPro on the base at one point. Everything about this Marietta drive video. Well, well, just before we get started, there's a few people saying, I like it, um, kind of conjugated, like it's spelled the same and everything with a different emoji. I think that was definitely like. They asked someone to do it. And then somebody else said, I can't tell if this is meant to be serious. Um, and then the band like explains a bunch of times over and over again how <laughs> it's not fully serious, but it's also not a joke. Um, That's, so I love that hedge. Are you joking? Well, if you think so, yes. But also, <laughs> we tried very hard, and so no? <laughs> this is definitely like one of the most uh, catatonic youth videos <laughs> that I've found in a while. Um, yeah, so, th- so this is Marietta Drive uh, jamming out in the forest here.
many things going on. Okay, first of all, the, dr- the drummer is like, he has really long hair, and he's clearly a metalhead, and he's like having a very difficult time playing such a slow song. Um, he also has a Bane sticker on his kick drum, but he's, I can't really tell. I think that he recorded the drums badly, and then he's like having trouble playing along to them. Um, but then, as a result, the bass player who has a GoPro camera keeps looking back at the drummer, trying to figure out what's going on <laughs> while it's being filmed with a GoPro bass cam. He's like looking back, and then the singer has so much auto tune on his voice. Yeah, it's it's. It, but again, so woodsy. So like the auto tune really throws you off because they they place themselves in this like authentic setting. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. I love this one. Marietta Drive. Shout out to them. I wonder if they did ever upload other videos that they promised to do. Um, uh, I don't know. It looks like there's a few. It looks like they covered Dark Side. Have we done Dark Side yet? But it's <laughs> it's not a video. And like part of it is the is the visual. Right. Yeah. Oh, and they did. They've done some uh, Alkaline Trio covers as well. Maybe they were like, uh, let's not do a video with these other ones after sort of everything that went wrong in the woods for these poor guys. <laughs> 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 we can't go back in the woods. Okay, um, this next one. This is kind of a classic video that I've that I I've, I've been skipping over these ones lately, but I'm trying to make it as punishing as possible. And this one I just like because it's just a video of someone's knees wearing sweatpants while they quietly play the song. Um, this is Gabriel Barbo, but you wouldn't know because you just see the sweatpants with a lot. Like, of, yeah, just lot seeing of those killing. those knees. Yeah, <laughs> this is some old. Nasty sweatpants. But I also think I like this version. <laughs> well, let's see. I like the knees, at least. so quiet and you can't see the face it's just very haunting <laughs> it's, just, it, it's kind of spooky you're just hearing a muffled voice and looking at them knees <laughs> I'm a bit of a knee man so this is really this is doing yeah, it for so me for awakening sure. a new a new desire yeah. um, okay up next this one is really fucking rough as well I don't know what it is about this song that just brings out the worst in people um, this is a, an artist called the fourth fret um, and Boxing Day Blink-182 cover by the 4th Fret is licensed under a Creative Commons license. So that's Oh, okay, good to know. that's interesting. The, the album art for this is just absolutely terrible. Um, the 4th Fret, the Cranberry Ugh. tapes, it says. It's in front of, a, I guess, a stock photo of cranberries. And there's, like, so many fonts just on, on those few words. There are so many fucking fonts. Like, well, yeah, at, the 4th Fret is one font. And then the... The... This is a different font. Cranberry, different font. Tapes, different font. But all like other than the fourth fret, they're all the worst fonts you could ever imagine. I, can't, I won't yeah, even the fourth try fret to describe is like them. A, yeah, the fourth fret is like Times New Roman, um, and also the the cranberry photo is like a vile cranberry photo. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> I mean, you can always tell that something is going to be bad by its <laughs> art, and that's also true with the fourth fret.
I'm wrong, actually. It, it's not that bad at all. It sounds pretty good, but it just sounds like someone who's, like, never kind of experienced any form of subculture ever in their life. Like, they've never... <laughs> They they have no concept of anything other than um, wherever they live, which I assume is near some sort of cranberry farm. It's got to be like I wonder with like cities <laughs> built on cranberry farming. <laughs> like I feel like <laughs> oh god, you know where you know where cranberries are big, bro? <laughs> Indonesia, Massachusetts. Oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, they love to grow cranberries <laughs> in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe that's where... Okay, I'm, now I really want to know where this person is from. Come on, come on. Uh, no, it's... Wait, what even is NC? North Carolina. Louisburg, oh, North Carolina. Oh, close to Massachusetts. Yeah, similar, right? Similar zone. I feel like... I mean, it's the East Coast, right? I mean, how does America work? <laughs> <laughs> wow. We don't have time to get into that one. <laughs> All right, this next one I'm literally only playing because of the name of the group, which is just very funny if you're me or probably if you're you, um, because this <laughs> band is called The Nut Band. Um, <laughs> and Nut, you, you have emphasized it correctly because Nut is all caps with two Ts. <laughs> right. And then there's just, on the art that goes with it, someone's pouring a big mason jar of white liquid, thick white liquid, into their coffee. <laughs> Um, and this is the nut band and it's, there's a couple in the photo and it's just two people and it says nut. Um, and that is funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny to say nut like that a lot. It is, it is good and fun. This is what these nut, these nut people sound like. Oh, they're also from Russia, I believe. I mean, I didn't not nut. <laughs> it's weird you, when what's, these your, so- what's your nut status it's weird over when, there? When these songs are so able to become like a YouTuber room tour, like just like normie YouTube kind of music, like, I feel <laughs> right, like that's such yeah. a strange thing. Like that's, this sounds like a a throw blanket. It sounds like post kinfolk interior design where everything's white and like wood wood. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm, <laughs> I'm having a mental breakdown from this. It's like like exposed wood and white and like and like exposed light bulbs. Like it just it became so normy so quickly. Is that a bad sign for a blink song that it can that quickly become normy? Yes. Or is that just the nut <laughs> influence on it? Right. That might just be the nut sound. Um, <laughs> I'm on the nuts Twitter page and it's full of like this weird like poetry that then goes to links that I assume would be like Instagram photos, but then they're just dead links. So, you know, one of their, their second last post was, uh, when October is so dark and winter, when the love is so high. And then when you click through to the link, you just get this dead, like Russian 404 page, which is like a dog that looks like it's been beat up. (laughs) It's so <laughs> very strange. It's like a ghost dog skull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but like a, a dog that died in a dog fight. <laughs> right. I'm not nothing uh, looking at this dog. Hey, it's not, sure. not, it's not nothing. It's something. Um, <laughs> moving on from that. Okay, this is the second last one. This band is called Jammin' Toast. And I think it's like some, some people at school just like having a laugh. Um, it's the last jam and toast of a decade. This is clearly in like a spare room at a college, I think. Um, just five people. This is uploaded a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago. Um, and if you click, I think you should, while this plays, you should click through and check out the header image on jam and toast's uh, <laughs> YouTube page. It says oh, jam, wow. and, <laughs> jam and toast, 
don't be jelly, spread the jam, and then there's like... A, <laughs> How like is this jam from this smeared. year? How could you yeah. design it something looks, that looks like this? This is like Corel like Word Perfect. Like this is from. <laughs> this is like bringing that MS DOS energy exactly. from the earlier part of the it's, episode. It really is family computer season. Um, so yeah, this is. I guess this is Peter, Olivia, Dan, Melissa, and Alex, otherwise known as Hungry. Um, so he must be hungry. I guess is the the thing they're saying here. Um, and from the looks of it, it's Olivia. She's sitting on one of those. Normie drums that you sit on that that is not Christian. I don't think. I don't think Christians right. ever sit on that box. We've established. Although that box she's sitting on the drum, the box for it is right to. I think she just cracked open that box right today. Wow, well, it's a Christmas. It was Boxing Day, so maybe she went out, got it at a sale. <laughs> right, could be. Although it is pronounced Bozing Day. I'm but, here. Uh, I'm Olivia. I'm Dan. I'm Melissa. I'm hungry. Oh, I'm Melissa. hungry. I'm Dad. <laughs> Uh, I was reading them in the opposite order. Yeah. This is Boxing Day. Oh. Yeah. Bye, Blink. 182. They really just did the I'm hungry, hi hungry, I'm dead thing and like laughed so hard. Damn, Dan has some pretty sick tone going on right now though. Sounds pretty fucking good. That was fucking great, yeah. Although I was okay, I was wrong. It wasn't Olivia, it was Melissa who's sitting on the new box that just came out of the box. And I hate to be this kind of person, but she's just using it as a chair. I mean, it's like when you see someone walking around with a skateboard and you know that they're a fucking poser. You know what I mean? Like she she's clearly never there's no like I know it's brand new, but she's got to be breaking it in so that people don't think she's a poser on that box. <laughs> right, box pose. <laughs> it's the worst thing that can happen to you. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I just I hate posers no matter what we're talking about here. <laughs> Even if they're just like in the college jam sesh. So I, as I was researching this song, uh, I, I was blown away by the amount of covers and different genres and everything. Um, but so then I was determined to really keep digging and digging and digging. And then, uh, as I was like getting deeper and deeper into the dig, I found, let me make sure I, I have a screenshot of it somewhere. This is important. Um, I found something that caught my eye and I was like, oh, this is really funny. But then I realized it's actually intentionally just for us. And so this, this appeared while I was searching, as you'll see. Um, I don't know if you recognize that face that haunts us every day oh, yeah. and night. So, um, yep. <laughs> so digging around. We're talking, about, we're talking about the cat in the photo, not the human, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, so digging around through, this, and this is the last cover here, and it's one of the last ones that I found because it was deep, deep down in YouTube. Um, it's from the user Alex Cook, whose face. It's a familiar name. <laughs> the name and face. I would never forget because it's someone who is constantly bugging me on Twitter. It's Polly Sci Alex, and we. I think he came up last week too. He's kind of like he was the tr- one of the first true villains of the pod. Um, oh yeah, I think he was the first person you blocked. Uh, yeah, he was. I blocked him because he was snitch tagging us and telling Mark that we were <laughs> making fun of him, and I was like, "Fuck that, you're blocked." And then to get unblocked. I made him write an essay about why snitch tagging is wrong, and he actually wrote it. Um, it's pretty terribly written, but I don't know. I don't really get what he does because he's clearly not good at writing essays, and I've never seen him say anything poli-sci at all, despite having the name poli-sci Alex. 
on yeah. Twitter. But, but the thing, <laughs> he should insist that he tweet more about both politics and science. Yeah. To sort of <laughs> but never, earn the, that user never the twain shall meet. <laughs> <laughs> never political science, only politics or science. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but something about Alex is that he fucking loves the song Boxing Day. Um, so much. Oh, and there's another sick. guy in the nation named David Park, and he also has, like, I think 50 alt accounts um, on Blink-155 Twitter. But he hates Boxing Day, and so they're always at mm. each other's necks about whether or not Boxing Day is a good song or not. So I knew we were going to mention him uh, this week, but I did not realize that he was going to punish us with by hiding this <laughs> in the yes. depths of YouTube. So uh, this has seven views somehow. It's, it was uploaded oh, wow. May 4th of this year. Um, so it says, Blink-182 Boxing Day cover, acapella while grooming, and then hashtag Blink-155, hashtag Josiah Pick Me, hashtag Teens in the Menchies. Um, <laughs> in the description Alex has written I just want to be on the pod so bad And this song rips <laughs> so hard So I don't know Maybe we'll skip around This is three fucking minutes long But it starts like this <laughs> Come on balance okay. Let's get <laughs> He's shaving in the mirror Being broken hearted Hold up I've got something I cannot hide Worst painkiller the all in the fairway apart and broken Look in your eyes Sad how far you ran I'll search this land It's such a strange angle too like, oh, yeah, So it's a vertical video I feel like the phone is like wedged next to his like faucet yeah. Based on that sound And one of the lights in, in your bathroom is burnt out Alex So <laughs> Wait, the camera just fell. <laughs> yeah, and now he's brushing his he's, teeth. He's brushing his teeth now. <laughs> this makes me he's also clearly got these lyrics memorized. Like he, he's not looking at his phone. Besides making like eye contact with us, which is unsettling. He is looking off to the side, but maybe he printed out the lyrics to do this. But hmm. I don't think he's brushing properly. <laughs> going to be a lot of plaque right at the gums there with that angle. Yeah, mm-hmm. and no no flossing. No flossing. Oh, he fl- okay, sorry, I skipped ahead. Wait, he flosses after he brushes? He flosses after he brushes his teeth, which is fucking insane. This video, is, I think it's because the the mirror lights are those like, it looks like they're those circle like backstage lights. Yeah. And so this is really giving me Todd Phillips Joker energy. <laughs> I hate this so much. Why is he flossing after? He lives in Utah. They do everything fucked up over there. Well, this is, is this appropriation? Because I have no idea what Alex's, you know, religious affiliation is. I just assume the only reason you would live in Utah is if you're Mormon. I don't think he is. He was also, like, trying, so, he was, like, trying to get me to go for a meal with him during Sundance because he lives in Park City. And uh, after seeing this video, I'm very glad that I didn't. <laughs> He's also just, like, flossing random teeth. Yeah, this is not good grooming. Like, I'm troubled by this. I'm guessing he just did this for the video, but I also think that the day he did this, he probably, when it was bedtime, was like, I don't really need to... I don't really need to do it again because I already did it for the video. And then he fucked up his whole shit. So you think he's fake grooming right now? (laughs) The end of the video is so upsetting. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to play this again. Just listen to what happens at the end. <laughs> Good night. Right into the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Good Lord, Polly Sci Wow. Alex. I got to say, Polly Sci Alex has, has had a, a, a very complicated relationship <laughs> with the pod. Um, We've created and this a monster. Is like a, this, this takes it to an entire sort of a, a new place that I'm, I'm excited to explore together. <laughs> I think my final thought is related to this, and it's that um, this song has a very dark energy to it. 
<laughs> it scares me. <laughs> Everything yeah. about it is very scary and uncomfortable. We've had an accidental Gex, and we've had this, and we've had the nut band. I mean, it's just like, I think I'm, yeah. I'm ready to move on. And also, this is our last episode of the year 2019. I think it's time just for like a whole reset altogether. Yeah, let's <laughs> shut it down. I think I'm, that's my final thought, too, is yes, please. <laughs> Let's get started, a fatal broken hearted, hold it up, I've got something I can't hide. Worst pain killer that all in filler, the part and departed, look in my eyes. Welcome to Blink-155, somebody we've... Uh kind of been hoping to get for a while so excited to have you on our very special boxing day episode welcome goody grace what's up absolutely man i'm happy to be here man i'm a big fan of the podcast um i've been listening for a while thank you guys for reaching out <laughs> hell yeah i didn't realize that you listened actually <laughs> dude yeah man i was like i was waiting i'm like man are they gonna hit me up like uh, I'm, I'm ready <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Well, okay, the first thing you need to know, I should have told you this before I hit record, that because this is coming out on Boxing Day, we're pretending Christmas already happened. So I want you to tell okay, me, how, how was your Christmas this year? Amazing, man. It was great. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And so, yeah, you're, you're back home for Christmas, and you are from... Yep. Selkirk, Manitoba, which uh, I was telling you in the DMs, I was actually born in Winnipeg. Um, my my whole yeah, family is like, my, my whole family's from Winnipeg. My dad was telling me that like people used to make fun of Selkirk when he was a teenager. Um, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the vibe with Selkirk? I mean, what tell us about this place that you're from? Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, it's small, but I love it, man. It's home. I, I come tap in as much as I can, and I lived here my whole life, so I moved to LA. So you know, it's in my blood. So, um, like, you even managed, in your scumbag video, you managed to, like, put Selkirk on display big time. Yeah. Yeah, man, we shot most of the video in my hometown. Um, actually, aside from the blink parts, because uh, I was in a garage in L.A., because, you know, Travis doesn't fly and stuff, it would have been hard. So, I right. think, you know, we merged it. We merged it properly to kind of make it look like they were here. So, it turned out, you know, exactly what I wanted it to be. You're, yeah, I, I assume you weren't going to make Travis drive all the way from L.A. to uh, Selkirk, Manitoba. <laughs> nah, I mean, maybe one day. <laughs> so, first of all, Boxing Day. When it's Boxing Day, what do you do? Do you go to Polo Park or something, get some sales? <laughs> I can't believe you know what Polo Park is. Um, I used to go to Polo Park. I mean, now it's like, man, I, could, I don't really want to go to a mall at like 8 a.m. Um, <laughs> right. I will probably, I'll probably be sleeping, you know. But America doesn't have Boxing Day, does it? Yeah, that's the weird thing, right? Like, Blink named their song Boxing Day, and yet it seems like it's not really a thing well, over there. Well, you know, Mark Mar spent a lot of time in London, though. Do they have it in the U.K.? Oh, yeah, actually maybe? they do. It started in the U.K., so maybe that's why. Oh, okay, great. Because, yeah, you know, like, I'm pretty sure Mark, like, in England, or he spent a lot of time there, I believe. Right. Um, so, yeah. so you're, like, hella young, also, is the other thing. Um, I'm <laughs> curious, I'm like... Yeah, that's that's crazy. You're just a ba- a babe, a wee baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I so I haven't been back to Winnipeg for a long time. I went there a couple of years ago to see my grandparents. Before okay. that, it had been like probably ten years. But um, where do you live now, LA? I live in Montreal, actually. Um, oh, okay, great. I love Montreal. Yeah, but uh, like my family, uh, my uncle has like a, a cottage on West Hawk Lake, so I know that area. And I know cool. um, I've been to Winkler before for, like, family reunions. Have you ever been to Winkler? Yeah, I know Winkler. <laughs> yep. I'm just curious, like, what, what was it like growing up in Manitoba? And specifically, like, how did you learn about music? How did you get into music living in Selkirk, Manitoba? Um, man, I was just, like, always, like, learning. I've, I've been playing guitar since I was, like, four or five and, like, just heavy on the internet, man. I mean, the first album I ever got, my brother gave me a tape of Enema of the State, and he played hockey, so, like, I'd be going to his practices and games and stuff just listening to it on repeat, like, studying it. So, I mean, Enema of the State was really, you know, I, I, I don't want to be disrespectful to the podcast, but, I, you know, I think I'm the biggest Blink fan on earth. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just, I was such a big fan, man, and, like, I, you know, I grew up in just studying music and getting into it, and then, you know, I got a laptop and started recording, and, um, uh, Made my, made my way out to LA and man it's, it's been really really cool but yeah my whole life I've just been totally invested in music but like was were you like go, like did people put on shows in Selkirk when you were a kid or anything 
I would play some shows around like Winnipeg and stuff, but I was mostly just like in the internet, man. I was just like putting right. up videos and you know studying music and reaching out to people and just just heavy on online. So you started obsessed with Blink One Eighty Two. How the hell did you get Blink One Eighty Two on your song? <laughs> man, it's insane. I know, man. I uh, I I met Travis briefly at like the top of twenty seventeen. I don't know, top of twenty eighteen, and. Uh, we followed each other on Instagram and stuff and, and on, you know, on Twitter and stuff, but never really linked up. We just kind of met briefly. I introduced myself and then, um, you know, I mean, I'm a very outspoken Blink fan. So he reached out to me last November on Twitter and asked if I come open for them in Las Vegas. So I went and did the two final shows of their residency. And, uh, it was, it was incredible, man. On the, the second and final night, they brought me out and I sang dumb weed and, uh, in their set, it was so cool. Amazing. And, um, yeah, we got back to L.A., me and Travis started working. I mean, we, we work on a lot of stuff now. Uh, he's helped me a lot with my debut album. Um, we've been working a lot with MGK. I mean, Travis has just been, like, a huge mentor and, like, a huge help in my life for the past, you know, 12 months. And, and really since I was a kid, like, they just keep continuing um, to change my life and help me out. And I ended up, you know, I wrote this song, Scumbag. Um, I made it with my friends at Futuristics. And then we got Travis to drum, and then Mark heard it. And then Mark hopped on it too, and I was like, "Damn, guys, can I put uh, Beach and Blink One Eighty Two, and <laughs> and here we are, man." Amazing. People really like the song. I, I can't. I can't believe that. You know the feedback from it. It's only been out for like five, six weeks now, and um, you know people people are really really loving it, and the, the feedback's been incredible. Yeah, because getting a featuring Blink One Eighty Two is a huge thing. Because I mean, obviously, no disrespect to Travis, but he's basically on every song that comes out now. I mean, that guy works yeah. like crazy. And he's killing it, man. So it's like every he, day he works harder than anyone I know. Every day there's a new Travis Barker song, but you actually were able to put featuring Blink One Eighty Two. And I saw some people online being like, uh, "How is it featuring Blink One Eighty Two if there's no Matt Skiba or whatever?" So I don't know. I mean, was right. there any question of that? Yeah, I mean, man, it, it was all good. Matt's, Matt's my boy, man. We just, it, it didn't really matter. No, no one really had, uh, you know, issues with it. And, and Matt wasn't along for the recording process at all. But, you know, every I, I popped out at the Forum in L.A. and at Barclays in New York, and I would do Adam's song in their set. They brought me out, and, and Matt played with us. And, I mean, Matt, Matt's a great friend of mine, man. It's, it's, it's all love all around. So, okay, the, something really funny happened with, so your song is called Scumbag. Um, are yep. you, do you know somebody named Clyde? He makes music as hot leather. And, uh, of course, man. <laughs> I love Clyde, man. Right. I'm honestly like, I'm, I, I'm honestly the biggest hot leather fan. Dude. I, will, I will take that title. I tell him all the time. Hot man. leather I, is I so sick. Hot leather. hot leather is so sick. But anyways, here, okay. Hell I'm going to take you on a little journey okay. here with something funny that happened. Go stream brain poison. Um, <laughs> yeah, <they're> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so Clyde, with his meme account, CornFan420, like many years ago, uh, pointed out mm-hmm. that Dude Ranch, the, the album title Dude Ranch, he thinks means come because it's like the ranch from a dude or whatever. Yeah, so I that, think that's what it does mean. So that's become like an ongoing joke on our podcast to the point that we even made okay. merch that was like uh, – like little like handkerchiefs that say dude ranch on them. And we were selling them as cum rags. <laughs> That's our merch is like, we sell cum rags that say dude ranch. And then a couple of weeks ago, Mark Hoppus went to a Christmas party with his wife and he was wearing a scumbag, scumbag like w- one of your sh- shirts or whatever. But the way that it was photographed, it was like folded perfectly so that it said cum rag instead. Man, that's the, <laughs> honestly, it's so funny you say that. That's been like the funniest thing of those sweaters. Cause I gave it, you know, the sweaters to all my friends that they're available online and at my shows and everything. And the funniest thing is so many people have taken photos where it's like cut off and says cum bag. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's incredible. Amazing. There's, well, yeah, you know, many uses. Exactly. Like you've accidentally been advertising our merch with your merch so i appreciate it <laughs> of course man i got you <laughs> so i feel like you're too close to blink 182 maybe to really have some like harsh opinions i feel like you're too positive and too close to them but i'm curious like are you more of a mark <laughs> guy or more of a tom guy um man honestly like this isn't even like biased or anything but i think i'm more of a mark guy um you know i love it all in in all honesty, my favorite is when they sing on the same songs, which is why I'm happy that you asked me to talk about Boxing Day. It's one of those rare songs where you know Tom's on the verse and then Mark's on the hook, and they do some harmonizing. I, I love those those right. styles, like um, on Josie, 
you know, even what's my age again, you could hear Tom's, um, Tom's vocals in there towards the end, um, feeling this, like, I, I love when they're both on the song together. Um, but I think I'd have to choose Mark at the end of the day. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. You don't it seem to beat me up if I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, yeah. So what do you think of the song boxing day? I love it, man. It's actually like, I hadn't listened to it in a while and I went back to it. I always like, for some reason, kind of like overlook the dog eating dog EP. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know why I just, maybe cause it's just an EP, but there's gems on it, man. And Boxing Day is incredible. I mean, those melodies, the like acoustic vibe. It's the drum pattern. I love that it's like, you know, kind of like hip hop drums under the acoustic. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, I find it, yeah, I find the tempo to be very, I guess, kind of strange. For It almost sounds like John Mayer to me, like the speed of it and everything. Well, I like that it starts off like a folk song and yeah. then the drums come in halftime. So it's kind of hip hoppy, but the acoustic stays drumming how it is, you know? Yeah, for um, sure. I mean, it's so catchy. It always gets stuck in my head. Well, um, when we were listening I to it, that song. it, some of the melody is pretty similar to Smash Mouth All Star, actually, at the start, which is a great is place to start. Was? Yeah, okay, I was thinking, I was re listening to it on my flight last night, and I was like, the verse reminds me of something. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Someone even did oh, a yeah. mashup. It's like, that's what it is. Damn. Wow. That's hilarious. <laughs> I know. I'd love to know. I like, wonder if, if they ever got in trouble for that. Or if they even realize. Like, maybe they're like, oh, my God. Because that happens all the time, right? You're like, I've stumbled upon the perfect melody, and then you realize that it's already a song that exists. Hey, man, that happened to me with Scumbag. Really? Yeah, yeah. We. I mean, it's all cool. They're the homies. We cleared it all up and, and everything sorted out. But I, I gave... Uh, um, you know, the, the dude from Plain White Tees writing credit because I subconsciously ripped Hey There Delilah. Oh, shit, really? <laughs> so, so if you go to the, yeah, man, it's cool. I mean, he's the homie, man. I hope that, like, you know, we all win Grammys and, and shit off Scumbag. But if you go to the songwriting, um, you know, the dude from Plain White Tees has song. If you go to the credits, he has songwriting credit on, on Scumbag. So at what point did you figure yeah. that out? And then were you, like, you just called him up and were like, We uh, figured it out before the song came out, luckily. So it wasn't like, you know, there was no, like, lawsuit or anything involved. It was, it was all great. And, yeah. You know, he's, he's been super supportive. And, and I'm a big Plain White Tees fan, so it's kind of cool to have them a part of it anyway. But, um, yeah, man, that happens all the time in music. It's kind of wild. Yeah, that's that's really wild. So, why do you think it is that for your generation, like Blink One Eighty Two, is the Beatles? Man, I just think like it's so crazy. I, I I've always kind of had this attitude of being like, I wanted to you know try and convey the same energy that Blink One Eighty Two gave me as a kid, and like the way it made me feel. It's just so nostalgic and like happy, but you know melancholic. And I I I'm just obsessed with the feel that they've always gave me and i've always been trying to perfect it through my music so i can't believe that i really you know got them just a part of it um and you know they, they've helped me and, and now travis has been helping me i just think they're so important i think they're such a staple of our generation um you know a couple of weeks ago me and, and machine gun kelly and, and travis uh barker we, we played at emo night in la um and we did mgk song i think i'm okay and then what's my age again and it's like you know, what's my age again? All, all these songs are just classic, like timeless songs that go off like they still came out yesterday. And I feel like it'll be that way for a long, long time. So when you guys covered What's My Age Again, who played the main riff? Because that's a fucking hard riff to play. Yeah, our, our friend Nick did. He was he was playing it. I was actually on bass. Um, <laughs> Sick. Kels, was, Kels was on like rhythm guitar and then me and him both sang it. Yeah, Right on. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's so cool, cool man. There's videos online, so you should check it out. Hell yeah, yeah. We'll put, we'll we'll make sure everyone checks it out. And so, I just want to ask you, like, yeah. what's next for you? Um, man, after I get back from this little Christmas vacation, um, I'm gonna be back in the studio with Travis and uh, finish up my debut album. Man, I'm I just made you know I've been working so much. I, I feel like since Comeback came out, it's been such a like energy shift and me and all my friends are just feeling so good and so motivated. I think that, you know, between me and like my, my circle of musicians and close friends that I've been working with a lot, I feel like 2020 is just about to be such a great year for all of us. I just did a big show in, um, in Cleveland. Machine Gun Kelly brought me out. We did a, 
a new song that we just put out that I'm, I'm on and helped write called Why Are You Here? And then I did Scumbag in a set. And we were just like, man, it, it's such a good time for rock and like, and for pop punk and stuff. Like, I just, I think we're kind of, you know, just trying to show that the, the shit's not dead and that, you know, we can maintain that energy into the new decade as it was in the early 2000s and, and as it's always been. So I'm just trying to really perfect my debut album to be everything that it has to be and then, you know, keep rolling stuff out. Hell yeah. I hope you get a hot leather feature on your debut album. Man, I hope so, man. I got to work with Clyde. I got to tap in. I haven't talked to him for a while. <laughs> I love him. A couple of weeks ago, I had a really, really amazing session um, for for a song of mine that you know I think I think it'll absolutely end up on my album. It, it, it was me, the Futuristics, uh, MGK, and Mark Hoppus. Whoa. I posted about it. Amazing. Yeah, man, it, it was a great day. I'm I'm just trying to like now that I'm so thankful to have so many like cool people I look up to helping me out. I'm just like really trying to get them involved as much as I can. It's kind of interesting that you're from Selkirk, Manitoba, but you're like, it seems like you've kind of skipped the whole like bullshit Canadian music industry and just gone straight to the belly of the beast. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, get, I'll, I'll just get a medium ice cap. I'm, I'm ordering Tim Hortons. So, <laughs> oh my God. Um, <laughs> can I get more candor than that? Man, I'll tell you, it. It's because I moved so young, man. I've been in L.A. since I was, like, 16, so I just feel like yeah. my whole, like, kind of late teens to now were spent there as well as my introduction to the music industry. So, yeah, I've never, um, I never really tapped into the community, like, the Canadian music community, um, but I'd like to more. I mean, I, I don't, you know. I don't discriminate. I'm, I'm Canadian. All right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Cool. Well, uh, have a great boxing day. <laughs> and yes, man. Go train boxing day. Love Link 182. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you have fun at Polo Park lining up for some deals. Um, I will, man. I 100% <laughs> Maybe will. Maybe hit up the and, forks um, after with your family. That would be nice. Man, you know all the landmarks. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the two, the um, big two. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. As I said, I'm a big fan of the podcast. I'm honored to be a part. Ghost Stream Scumbag, um, featuring Blink 182 out now. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, man. Stay stay on the lookout for, for more stuff. There's a lot on the way. 